Picture this. You're a harmless animal that can't defend yourself. What are your options? Run and hide, right? Nah, that's for the weak. The strong move is to imitate a creature that scares the daylights out of everyone. Not just imitate, literally turn into one. The animals we're going to talk about today are very good at it. Today, you'll discover the insect version of Frankenstein's monster, how skilled birds are at mimicking snake dances, why owls make crackling sounds and bats respond with buzzing, and what a crab, a leopard, and a butterfly have in common. Meet the hoverfly. These little insects with two wings ranging from about 0.2 to 1 inch long come in various shapes and colors depending on their species. But the most exciting thing about them is their ability to disguise. Most grown-up hoverflies do a killer job imitating wasps and bees with their yellow-black stripes, pointy abdomens, and some even sport long antenna. Basically, they've really nailed the look. This kind of mimicry is called deceptive. Basically, hoverflies are flies that are physically unable to bite or sting, but they look and act like stinging insects. And if you need to defend yourself from predators, this works perfectly. Certain hoverflies pick one species to copy, like honeybees or bumblebees. Others don't bother specializing and just resemble bees and wasps in general. If it's striped, it might sting so best to keep your distance. Of course, there are ways to distinguish a hoverfly from a wasp or bee, otherwise scientists would be in so much trouble. The most reliable way is to check the wings. Hoverflies usually have a relatively big head and shorter antenna compared to wasps and bees. They don't bite or sting, they're basically just striped flies. Some hoverflies look so different from wasps and bees that it'd take a pretty clueless animal to mix them up. Their imitation seems pretty half-hearted and might not fool anyone. But then why bother faking it at all? Nature usually has a reason for things, but it seems like hoverflies just got lazy halfway to their goal. It's still a head-scratcher for scientists. The hoverflies themselves don't bother to comment. Bees and flies belong to the same insect family, so they're not too far apart in terms of evolution. What about more complex imitation, like a bird mimicking a snake? While the Eurasian wryneck is technically in the woodpecker family, it acts as if it was adopted. These birds don't drum into trees like typical woodpeckers do. They prefer looking for food on the ground, but they sport an incredible woodpecker-like neck. Take a look at this neck. It's long, flexible, and packed with a ton of muscles. It's essentially the same kind of neck that helps woodpeckers make holes in trees. It seems that at some point, the wry neck realized it didn't have to drum on trees, so it found a new way to use its neck. This clever adaptation helped it trick predators that weren't paying attention. So basically, when the wry neck feels threatened, it uses its family trait to act like a snake. Yep, the wry neck imitates snakes by moving its neck in a way that really resembles a snake. If you watch it in action, you'll get how it works. It's pretty weird, especially if you're holding the bird in your hands. But when these birds are in the shadow of a dark hollow tree where they nest, their disguise fools creatures like stoats, hawks, and other predators that might fancy having them for a meal. According to an expert, it took Rynex thousands of years to realize and then develop their similarity to snakes. I wonder how shocked the very first bird was when it realized it scared away a predator just by shaking its head by accident, and then thought, well, that's neat. Consider how shocked the family must have been. They haven't caught on yet that when it comes to mimicking, you can up the game even further. And the more innocent you are, the more impressive you can become. Well, not exactly become, more like pretend? Butterflies are soft, fragile, and completely unable to defend themselves. I don't think it's pretty accurate to say they're one of the most defenseless animal species on the planet when it comes to life and death situations. What can they possibly do to an opponent? Dazzle them with their beauty? That's why owl butterflies found in New World rainforests have developed a clever trick to avoid becoming a tasty snack for local birds. These butterflies can grow up to 8 inches, quite a feast for hungry birds. To protect themselves, they've grown two eye-like spots on their lower wings that look a lot like owl's eyes. Take a look and see for yourself. The butterfly's wing shape, color, and size all together make it look a lot like an owl's head. This trickery can fool even humans and birds that snack on insects. It's like a butterfly putting 
putting on an owl costume. And no one messes with an owl. No one. Actually, you'd be surprised how many animals mimic eyes. Sure, butterflies are the first creatures to come to mind, but there are also lizards with spots, owls with markings on their backs, fish with patterns, and some predatory felines with spots on the back of their ears, all creating the illusion of having more eyes. Even a peacock's stunning tail is basically a bunch of extra eyes. But here's the thing. Those eyes aren't always trying to mimic some other animal. Most of the time, they're meant to make a predator feel like they're being watched by another set of eyes, robbing them of the element of surprise. And guess what? Predators usually stop hunting if they think they're being observed. Why bother? You can't sneak up anyway, and no one wants to chase prey that's already spotted you. This rule works so well that farmers have started painting artificial eyes on cows, especially on the back. This does a pretty good job of keeping cattle safe from lions. Just so you know, it's not only caterpillars showing off their splendid imitation skills, caterpillars have their own tricks too. Meet Dinosaur Darius Darius. It's deception level 5,000. Native to Trinidad and Tobago, the larvae of these butterflies have developed an impressive defensive strategy against potential predators, a very realistic snake suit. Right at the cocoon stage, once pupated, Dinoster Darius Darius hangs on the underside of leaves at a carefully chosen angle for 13 days, pretending to be a snake. It's a very clever strategy because pupae can't hide or run away from a predator. They can't move at all. And when you sort of look like a snake, who's going to risk eating you? Actually, caterpillars and pupae come loaded with defense mechanisms. Venom, silky bungee cords, mimicry, camouflage, poison, bad smells, unappetizing hair, and even making noise. It's no wonder these creatures are basically moving protein-packed sausages whose main job is to get even larger and more appetizing. That's why everyone, from birds to humans, goes after them. For caterpillars to make it, they've got to have a solid defense. If you're amazed by a snake like Chrysalis's cool camouflage, wait until you see the Himero Plains Triptolemus caterpillar. Its deception level surpasses 5,000, sending shivers down the spines of anyone afraid of snakes. Living in the lush Amazon jungle, this creature might look weird but it's just a young version of a pretty average butterfly from the Sphingidae family. When it matures, it's quite unassuming compared to other butterflies, but its larva, when it gets startled, it expands its anterior body, doing a solid impression of a snake's head, complete with slick black eyes that even reflect light. This tricky move isn't easy to pull off. First, the caterpillar leans back and spins around to reveal its lower body of the right color. Once it's in position, it starts puffing air into that part and sucks it in through tiny holes on its sides. Yep, this weird creature literally blows itself up into a snake. When the change is done, the caterpillar ends up looking like the head of a venomous snake. And if the looks don't do the trick, the caterpillar can also mimic an attack for a greater effect. But it's all a bluff. No venom, no biting capabilities. Many animals often use eye spots to divert predators' attention from their heads. Meanwhile, a caterpillar mimicking a snake goes a step further by having a false head right where its real one is. This creature probably can't survive if it gets pierced or loses any part of its body. So for the caterpillar, it's all or nothing. It really needs to look like a snake to scare off potential predators. And you know what? It actually works. Birds and lizards, the caterpillar's main predators, steer clear of it. Well, anyone would rather avoid a snake, especially a venomous one. It's a pretty effective strategy when even slow lorises start using this kind of disguise. Think about it. Primates hardly ever act like they're different creatures. Well, almost never. Definitely not like reptiles, though. But in Southeast Asia, slow lorises actually do it, and in a rather bizarre way. Despite their cute looks, these primates pack a venomous bite, almost like a snake. They even sport snake-like patterns and move in certain ways, and if they feel threatened, they'll let out a hiss. Some experts reckon that when the forest got riskier due to ancient climate shifts, these slow lorises evolved to mimic the Indian cobra to survive. Slow lorises are also nocturnal species, which only helps when they mimic a cobra. Imagine trying to figure out what's moving in front of you in the dark. Because this animal is moving in a very snake-like way, the animal raises its paws above its head to make a hood, wriggles, and makes a sound exactly like an angry cobra. Besides, oh wait a minute, we've been too focused on snakes. It's time to talk about other reptiles. Which ones do animals mimic to stay safe? Take a look. A strange, hollow head, lifeless big eyes. What is it? Some kind of pygmy crocodile? No, it's an insect, and it's called a lanternfly. 
The insect's oddly shaped head might just be for defense by looking like something else. Picture this. It sits on a tree with its head up, seeming like a lizard or a baby crocodile from the side. That's enough to fool some predators, but this bug's got a plan B, just in case. It spreads its wings, revealing fake eyes. The crocodile-like head and these eyes don't really match up, but somehow it works. And here's a fun fact. In the 1970s, a Colombian reporter wrote a chronicle about this insect and told a folk tale that if it bites you, it'll cause death. The only cure is to make love within 24 hours. Although this species is not dangerous at all, the publication of the text in a national magazine became quite notorious. No! No! Pickup artists might find this insect quite helpful. Okay, and this is... What kind of Pokemon is this? Nature's given this strange creature the head of a dragonfly, the wings and stripes of a wasp, and the body of a mantis. But the oddity doesn't stop there. This little creature doesn't fit into any of the mentioned insects. So who is it then? Chances are you're seeing it for the first time. It's a mantid fly, and it belongs to the same order as lacewings and antlions. Mantid flies are champions of mimicry. Adults can be seen sitting on the leaves of trees and bushes in summer. They hardly move. Why bother if you look like a wasp ready to sting? And no, mantid flies can't sting, but other animals don't need to know that. In fact, mantid flies are some of the most obscure insects in the invertebrate world. Few people study them, and those who do still haven't unraveled the secrets of their diversity and life cycle. The majority of mantid flies are tiny, under half an inch long, while the biggest ones have wings that can span up to an inch and a half. They resemble mantises with their elongated prothorax and raptorial forelegs with spines, which are held folded in a typical mantis fashion. But to say that mantid flies mimic mantises would not be quite right. Rather, they're an example of convergent evolution. That is, nature once created an animal so cool that it duplicated it in different parts of the planet independently. Mantid flies, much like praying mantises, are insect predators that play a crucial role in managing specific pests. They're skilled ambush hunters, which is again similar to mantises. But despite all this, some species of mantid flies do mimic wasps to play it safe. It's like a disguise. Instead of looking like a harmless bug, they look like a wasp with a dangerous stinger. This tricks birds into thinking twice before trying to snatch them. Got me thinking, can bigger creatures even pretend to be small bugs? Well, turns out there's this lizard called Heliobolus lugubris in the southern African savannas doing exactly that. It has an amazing coloration, see for yourself. And there's a good reason for this unusual color. A beetle living in the same area has a very similar coloration. Evolution hasn't given the lizard itself any protection, so without its camouflage, it'd be an easy snack for anyone. But the anthea beetles it imitates are capable of spraying formic acid, which is very unpleasant for predators. However, the lizard didn't stop at color alone. It's better to be certain. What if the predator's too hungry to pay attention to detail? Anthea beetles have a distinctive way of moving, darting forward, frequently pausing. Lizards mimic this motion precisely, even contouring their bodies to avoid suspicion. From a distance, telling them apart becomes nearly impossible. A predator will think twice before pouncing on a lizard, unsure if it's a beetle in disguise. And this is sad and not that delicious. By the way, only the young lizards sport that coloring, the little ones and the teens. Grown-up lizards are too big to be mistaken for a beetle, so they count on their speed and sandy color to stay safe, blending right into the ground. In general, if you take a closer look at the animal world, it becomes clear that the absolute leaders in camouflage and imitation are babies. It makes sense. They're vulnerable and not yet equipped to fend for themselves, so they've got to find ways to survive until they're grown up. And so, while most young birds rely on their parents for protection, Cenarius mourner chicks have their own survival tactics. To avoid being eaten by predators, they mimic poisonous caterpillars. This is easier than it sounds because the chicks are covered in bright orange barbed feathers when they hatch. No bird in its right mind would draw attention to itself in this way, but that's what caterpillars do. They use bright coloration to warn predators they're toxic. To make the camouflage even more effective, chicks even wriggle like caterpillars. The chicks are almost the same size as the caterpillar they're imitating. 
Taking safety to an extraordinary level, the parents step in, they visit the nest less frequently about once an hour, minimizing any potential risks for the chicks. During these visits, the chicks remain quiet instead of their usual loud calls. In general, whole caterpillar. They're pretty silent guys too. What about the fish? Turns out things are pretty interesting here too. Take a look at an adult zebra shark. Makes you wonder why they called it that, right? I mean, it doesn't really resemble a zebra. Why not a spotted shark or maybe even a leopard shark? But it becomes clearer if you look at its babies. And of course, their bodies are covered in stripes for a reason. Just as cheetah cubs mimic the coloration of the honey badger that everyone fears, zebra shark pups mimic the coloration of the yellow-lipped sea crate. Baby zebra sharks look a lot like these sea crates. Same color, same body shape, they even swim in a similar fashion. Sea crates are venomous and put up quite a fight when attacked. Some sharks hunt them, but most steer clear. Baby zebra sharks just use this to their advantage. In addition to their coloration, they have a very long single-lobed caudal fin that resembles the broad paddle-like tail of crates. This leaves no room for doubt whatsoever. When the researchers pieced it all together, they realized this kind of imitation is uh, first among sharks and rays. These fellas must usually be too cool to mimic anyone else. For me, it feels like being discreet is simpler from an evolutionary point of view than pretending to be something else. Sounds like it'd take less effort. So when Steve showed me the glowing cockroach, I thought it might be a result of some science experiment went wrong, or perhaps the cockroach fell into phosphorus, who knows? How else could it glow like that? A cockroach shining in the dark seems like an open invitation for predators. But surprisingly, this little insect manages just fine because there's another glowing insect in the same habitat, the bioluminescent click beetle. The unusual pair live in the rainforest around an active volcano in Ecuador. The glowing beetle uses its light to find a mate in the dark, which really saves time. To make up for the risks of being so visible, it's really toxic. All in all, it's a pretty good arrangement. The glowing cockroach really knows how to play it smart. Predators steer clear of it because they don't want to get poisoned. Scientists claim the mechanisms of glowing inside the insect are identical, but they don't have much to share yet. Both beetles and cockroaches are so rare that collecting them might lead to their extinction. Cockroaches are already suspected of extinction. They've only found one in the last 70 years. Plus, there's a volcano acting up, so it's not exactly a great place for them to thrive. However, using light as a trick isn't the usual deal. Most animals use patterns such as stripes or spots that resemble eyes. Have you ever wondered why almost all big cats have spots or stripes? There are dozens of feline species out there and only a handful, like lions, break the pattern. And even among lions, they're born with spots and lose them as they grow. Researchers suggest that the unique patterns on the fur of different cats probably evolved independently rather than stemming from a common spotted ancestor. In simpler terms, each cat kind of evolved its own spotty look, but the big question is why? Why did evolution put in so much effort to make so many spotted creatures? Well, because it's damn good camouflage. So good, in fact, that even a crab decided to borrow it. The leopard crab, or Hepatus ephyliticus, has leopard-like spots, and they serve a similar function to those found on large feline predators. Imagine it as the camouflage pattern on military gear, designed to make someone less noticeable when they're moving far away. If you've got one color moving against a bunch of different colors, it's easy to spot but a mix of colors moving among other colors blends in more effectively. In the same way, the leopard crab, which is usually partially buried in the sand, is much harder to spot than any of its relatives. And you have to admit, it's quite odd how unrelated animals can share a similar intricate pattern. Okay, from the sounds of it, we're back to bees. Speaking of which, here's something interesting. It's not only flies that mimic them, there's another creature doing the same. Bees and wasps are just too good at self-defense. Or rather, they got the most effective defense tools possible? Their sharp stingers, along with the painful toxin, work so well that they can scare away even owls. Owls are really afraid of these insects. When scientists tested owl reactions with recorded bee buzzes, the birds flew off right away. But when they heard prey noises, the owls actually edged closer to the sound source. Experts say that owls and many other birds try to avoid stinging insects. They go so far as to avoid trees where these insects make their homes. It appears that the awesome features of bees were mimicked by the greater mouse-eared bat. 
When researchers caught them for study, these bats produced noises remarkably like the buzzing of bees and wasps. If it fooled owls, it might just trick humans too, right? That's how the researchers came to the conclusion that the greater mouse-eared bats are trying to fool the birds of prey that hunt them. And it seems that owls have not yet learned to distinguish between the real buzzing of wasps and the buzzing of bats. So the bats keep buzzing. Bats and the sounds they produce caused quite a stir among scientists when they were first discovered. Why? It's one of the most unique examples of imitation. Some even believed it could be the first case of acoustic mimicry. Well, spoiler alert, no, it's not the first one. But that doesn't make it any less unique. Researchers often discuss visual mimicry when talking about deceptive mimicry. However, nature's full of surprises. Some animals can mimic the sounds of others. This unique ability works since not all predators hunt using sight alone. Oh, it works just fine. For a while now, bird experts and other scientists have been puzzled by the burrowing owl's surprising vocal abilities. Beyond the usual hoots and calls associated with owls, this bird does something extra. It's a hair-raising experience because, believe it or not, the owl hisses. It's a long, rattling hiss. It's worth saying that the burrowing owl doesn't live in trees. It prefers burrows that are dug by other animals like prairie dogs and gophers. Scientists think its habit of hissing may have evolved for the owl to mimic a rattlesnake. It does sound similar. No, really, listen. And that sonic threat is usually enough to scare most unwanted visitors away from the burrow. It turns out that rattlesnakes are, in a way, a bit like wasps. Few creatures want to mess with them. Therefore, the hissing of an owl can scare away almost anyone from the burrow. Except for scientists, they're just too stubborn. Another great example to follow is the Gaboon Viper. It doesn't make rattling noises, but it's still pretty damn dangerous with giant fangs and a huge supply of venom. So the Congolese giant toad decided that pretending to be this snake was a great idea. Gaboon vipers are known to tilt their heads when threatened and let out a prolonged warning hiss before attacking. The toad does the same thing. But it's not only that. Take a look at the picture. It shows the head of a viper and the back of our toad side by side. Can you spot the differences? The toad's triangular body, smooth skin, which is rare for a toad, and coloring make it very similar to a snake. All right, to us humans, it's pretty obvious they're different, especially if you check the snake's head scales up close. But hey, the Gaboon Viper is so deadly, no predator stopping for a second look. Similarity alone does the trick. Creatures just steer clear, or better yet, flee in the opposite direction. You know, just in case. Oh, and here's something interesting. The toad mimics a viper by striking a pose without using its front legs. It makes sense since snakes don't have limbs. So picture this, the toad resembles a viper getting ready to strike. No one would want to stay close to that. How did the toads manage to look so much like the viper? Since toads only live where vipers are found and they share a close evolutionary past, so they probably co-evolved. The snake became venomous and as for the toad, it borrowed the idea but added a twist. We've talked about animals imitating each other's appearances and sounds, but there's a lot more out there. Nature's full of such examples. Think nature can't surprise you anymore? Think again. Here's a fish that mimics electricity. <laughs> yes, you heard right. In the fresh waters of South America, every animal knows that messing with an electric eel is a bad idea. Delivering electric shocks of up to 860 volts, they can handle even a large and armored animal like a caiman. The eel has gone through a challenging, lengthy evolution to acquire this skill, along with specialized organs and a unique body build. The blunt-nosed knifefish didn't bother with this, it did something trickier. It simply learned to impersonate an eel. In the Amazon waters, many fish, including catfish like this one, rely on electrolocation to hunt. Every water creature has a faint electric field around them, and these fish use this sense to find prey. They're aware of and steer clear of the electric eel. That's why the blunt-nosed knifefish is adapted to mimic electricity around itself, fooling possible predators into mistaking it for an electric eel. So what if it doesn't look like an eel? Most predators steer clear of anything that acts like an electric eel. Just one mistake could spell the end for them. If it doesn't look like an electric eel or act like one but feels like one, Better steer clear, it's a safer bet. 
Out of all the animals I've talked about today, the true trickster, sort of the Loki of the animal kingdom, has to be the mimic octopus. Found in the warm waters of Southeast Asia, this recently discovered species can mimic the appearance and behaviors of various creatures. This octopus has an amazing bag of tricks. Most mimicking creatures focus on perfecting one imitation over thousands of years of evolution. But not this octopus. This one is more like a versatile performer, smoothly shifting between various disguises as the situation demands. Just like other mimics, the octopus changes its color to hide. Yet it goes beyond that. It can twist and shape its body to look like different beings such as the lionfish, jellyfish, sea snake, shrimp, and crab. Scientists have spotted 13 distinct species that this octopus can mimic. Here it is, for example, mimicking a sea lily. And this is what the real thing looks like. It's not spot on, but if this act doesn't cut it, the octopus can always switch to another one. To avoid territorial fish, the octopus pretends to be a venomous sea snake, a natural enemy of those fish. It tucks six arms away and sticks the other two, mimicking snake-like movements. This octopus is quite intelligent. It chooses its mimicry based on its specific predator. As the octopus swims between its feeding spots, it morphs into the streamlined shape of a flatfish, imitating its appearance and even altering its color. It chooses to imitate the poisonous flatfish, making it unappealing as prey. It's the same reason why the octopus is mimicking lionfish. When imitating this venomous fish, it swims close to the seabed, its arms adopting the lionfish's colors and shape. From a distance, telling the two apart becomes nearly impossible. But this whole mimicry thing took a wild turn. I mean, it went way too far. A few years back, while filming an octopus on a dive trip in Indonesia, a researcher noticed something odd. There was this little fish tagging along with the octopus for quite a while. It stuck close to the tentacles, and you know what? The researchers seemed to be damn attentive since the color and stripes of the fish were the same as the ones the octopus had. Whoa, hold on a second. Let me get this straight. Steve, are you telling me this octopus who mimicked another animal bumped into some fish that decided to mimic the octopus itself? That is to mimic the mimic octopus? Let's just hope there's not a second fish mimicking the first one or the universe will collapse. I'm telling you. But what's really funny is that this whole situation is basically a coincidence. Scientists pinned down the fish as part of the Apistognathidae family. It wouldn't make sense for it to evolve solely to mimic a constantly changing octopus, so researchers reckon it's a stroke of luck. Predators don't bother the octopus, so it tags along, imitating a tentacle and moving about safely. So where do these mimics come from? Not this specific fish or octopus, but in general. Well, most creatures deal with predators regularly, leading to a constant game of survival. It's like an ongoing competition where prey must constantly come up with new tricks to avoid becoming someone's meal, while predators adapt to catch them anyway. This back and forth pushes some animals to evolve ways to blend in and avoid being noticed. Wouldn't it be amazing to uncover the incredible ways animals get their copying traits? But alas, it's not some mind-blowing revelation. It's just good old natural selection that's behind all this mimicry stuff. Let me break it down for you. Picture this. A butterfly lives its life, lays its eggs, and when they hatch, all the caterpillars look similar. But one of them happens to have odd spots on its body for some unknown reason. Now, by pure luck, these spots make this particular caterpillar look like another toxic bug that the local predators steer clear of. It's not a perfect mimicry, just a vague similarity. But it's enough to keep this caterpillar safe while its plain-looking siblings often end up as prey. When the spotted caterpillar produces offspring, it won't inherit the spots, yet there's a slightly bigger likelihood of a spotted caterpillar being born again. We're talking about hundredths of a percent here. To truly become a lasting trait, these spots need millions of years to root themselves in an organism's genetic makeup. Evolution takes time for the hundredths to add up to the final 100%. As the spotted caterpillar family grows and becomes stronger, new unique characteristics will pop up in their descendants. Some will help them survive, while others might not. The helpful ones stick around to become stronger, but that whole process takes millions of years for every single trait. In fact, that's how everything in the animal world works. But looking at mimicry as the example makes it especially fascinating. Plus, we've got a video about mimicry. Seems like everything fell into place for this. When one animal mimics another, it's basically scoring the jackpot over and over again in the vast time span of evolution, tens of millions of years. 
Each little similarity, no matter how small, tells the amazing story of that animal's ancestors and the incredible journey they went through. But then why aren't all the animals doing this mimicry thing? Seems like a pretty good survival strategy. Alas, they've just been out of luck. Also, for mimicry to work, it must be very rare. Otherwise, predators will catch on, start seeing through the imposters, and there will be no point in mimicking anymore. Anyway, even with this idea that just popped into my head, nature managed to find the right balance. See you later.